You know what? I'm having a well earned break next week. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in charge of the <gasps> entire company. That's oh. a, I just I feel I feel like that's the right thing to do right now. And you can host all of the Wrestle Talk News episodes, and you'll be Chopper's boss for the week. And you can do the SmackDown podcast with him too. And you know what? To that I say. Yes, please. I would very much like to do that role. Yes, it's true. This man has no news this week. Instead, I'll be running the show in the absence of Mr. Davis and the Ollie Authority. But before we get onto the top theory, it's time for me to make a confession. Because you see, with Mr. WrestleTalk, it was me, Davis. It was me all along. Oh, son of a bitch. The arm tats aren't real either. Give me a yes, please. Back in June of 2020, which I believe was eight months ago, the tag team of Jackson Riker, Steve Cutler, and Wesley Blake, collectively known as, ah, oh, shucks, I've gone blank. It's been so long since I've done the news. What were they called? The, um, the, the war lads, the, um, the, the battle bros? Anyway, they were taken off TV in June in the middle of their feud with New Day after Riker posted several controversial tweets that were pro-Trump and anti-Black Lives Matter, which was at the height of the protests over the murder of George Floyd. You can tell that June was a long time ago. New Day was still as Forgotten Sons. That's the name. Nailed it. First try. WWE wrestlers like Mustafa Ali, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Ricochet all posted responses to Riker calling him out, and WrestlingNews.co reported that several WWE stars were hoping to run into Riker backstage to educate him on why his comments angered the locker room, but also added that he wasn't alone in his opinions, as many people in WWE are Trump supporters. While Blake and Cutler did their best to separate themselves from Riker's statements by both saying they don't agree with their teammates' opinions, they were guilty by association, and the team hasn't been heard from in months. Riker only made matters worse for the group last week when he posted up a tweet that was anti-masks in the middle of a pandemic. But with SmackDown having zero tag teams, Sean Ross Sapp is reporting via Fightful that there has been talk about bringing the Forgotten Sons back to TV. However, it is unknown at this point whether it will be all three of them or just Blake and Cutler to further distance themselves away from Riker. It had been previously reported that the pair could be brought back with a completely new gimmick. Sapp adds that the creative team have been told to come up with some ideas on how to bring the group back, specifically noting that Edge has been talking with them. WrestlingNews.co have backed up the gimmick changing report, saying that regardless of Riker's tweet, a heel patriot gimmick isn't the best idea given the landscape in the US currently. Speaking of the US and the USA Network were reportedly unhappy with WWE. Segway. Last Wednesday, USA Network and Sci-Fi President Chris McCumber, who I legit read his name as Chris McCucumber this morning, notified his staff that he would be stepping down from his position after 19 years in the role. Now, why is this important, I hear you ask? Well, McCumber has been a longtime ally for WWE and was the liaison between the two companies for several years, and was the man who spearheaded their last deal, which was very lucrative for WWE. Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio that he expects little will change between WWE and USA Network in terms of their programming, as McCumber's replacement won't want to get rid of wrestling on the channel altogether, as fans see USA Network as the wrestling channel, given their output of five live hours of WWE each and every week. However, Meltzer adds that McCumber was a big supporter of Paul Heyman, and reportedly was very unhappy with the decision to replace him with Bruce Pritchard back in June. He was apparently really sold on Heyman's idea of building up new stuff rather than rely on old faces, which is something that did not sit well with McCumber. Meltzer does note that it's unknown whether his position changed once the ratings for Raw bounced back somewhat when Pritchard took over. Someone else who's been unhappy with WWE is former presidential candidate Andrew Yang, who has been rather outspoken about WWE in recent weeks, criticizing the company over their stance against their talent using Twitch and Cameo and the misclassification of them being independent contractors. He went as far to say, 
it was plain forking greed. Adding if your company is worth 3.3 billion and you're mistreating workers, I mean, that's really shameful. Really, it's shameful. There was a point in the distant past where you could have made a legitimate argument upon cost, but now you can't. Aiming to be the Secretary of Labor if Joe Biden wins the presidential election in a couple of months, Yang tweeted, Vince, you'd better hope your old friend Donald wins because change is in the air and changes are long overdue where your corrupt labor practices are concerned. It would give me great pleasure, the people know. And now he's spoken with Wrestling Inc about WWE's relationship with the Saudi Arabian government. It's a relationship that's been rocky since day one with the first show Greatest Royal Rumble being a literal propaganda piece for the country and their Vision 2030 plan. And it didn't get much better a few months later when Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi was murdered and dismembered after he wrote several critical articles about the government. At the time, WWE were questioned and criticized themselves for continuing to deal with the Saudi Arabian government with their crown jewel show in 2018. But the bottom line is the Saudi Arabia shows are WWE's most lucrative, each one earning more money than any WrestleMania in history. And there was more controversy last year when a plane taking talent home from the 2019 crown jewel show was delayed on the tarmac for several hours. There were a lot of reports at the time, with some saying that it was simply mechanical faults, while others say there was a military presence forcing them to stay grounded. It led to the famous episode of SmackDown with the last minute NXT invasion to kickstart the build for Survivor Series. There is currently a class action lawsuit against WWE over the incident, which claims that Vince McMahon cut the crown jewel feed in Saudi Arabia, which is why talent was held hostage. When asked about the crown jewel 2019 incident, Yang told Wrestling Inc, yeah, that there was a mystery and certainly there are a lot of unanswered questions associated with a lot of things that were coming out of that trip. And to me, unfortunately, our visibility into some of the happenings in Saudi Arabia isn't what we hoped it would be. He added, if I were in charge of WWE, I would not have been anywhere near taking money from the Saudis given their literal dismemberment of a journalist for political reasons. And now to wrap up the rest of the news from the world of professional wrestling. New Japan kicked off their G1 tournament over the weekend. Block A saw Will Ospreay beat Yujiro Takahashi, Tai Chi beat Jeff Cobb, Minoru Suzuki beat Tomohiro Ishii, Jay White beat Shingo Takagi, and an excellent main event of Kota Ibushi beating Kazuchika Kurakada. Over in Block B, Juice Robinson beat Yoshihashi, Tori Yano beat Sanada, Kenta beat Hiroki Goto, Zack Sabre Jr. beat former IWGP champion Evil, and current IWGP champion Tetsuya Naito beat Hiroshi Tanahashi in a must see match. We'll have more coverage of the G1 this week over on Wrestle 2 with live show reactions to all of the action in ring and a roundup podcast featuring Quizzlemania's fact checker Tempest. Kevin Kelly posted on Twitter to say that English commentary for both nights have been sent to New Japan and should be available to watch soon. And they'll be doing live commentary for the final three nights of the tournament. Brian Myers was on the latest Talking Shoppermania podcast and said he saw no genius in Paul Heyman when he worked with him on Raw last year. Myers said the genius is he had his finger on the pulse in the late 90s, but not now, because I saw no genius whatsoever. I was just explaining this to somebody. I was like, I know you guys all love to praise him for what he did then, and I'm sure that's real, and I did see him pull star quality and performances and things out of people that you wouldn't have thought, but man. I saw zero brilliance in 2019. John Morrison revealed that he had talks with All Elite Wrestling about joining them before eventually signing with WWE, adding that he will likely end his career there. Chuck Taylor of Best Friends is the latest wrestler to say the rivalry between NXT and AEW is BS, adding, those are all my friends. I was a groomsman in Johnny Gargano's wedding. Like, I want them to succeed too. Not at the expense of us, obviously. I hope they lose and die forever, but those are my friends. According to Undertaker, Vince McMahon changed the final 15 minutes of the Last Ride documentary, making the filmmakers put back in the line when Taker says, never say never about one more match, which originally had been taken out. So it looks like we're gonna get more Taker matches down the line. According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Vince McMahon was talking about singles pushes for both Bianca Belair and Peyton Royce a few weeks ago, but has since forgotten about them, which is, 
Well, it's very consistent for Vince, I'll give him that. SmackDown drew 1.954 million viewers for this past Friday show. It's the first time that SmackDown has been below 2 million viewers since the launch of Thunderdome and is the lowest number since July 31st. And finally, let's all head on over to social media to give congratulations to Kylie Ray, who announced on her Instagram account that she's now engaged to Isaias Velasquez. Yes, please, let's spread some positivity around the world. Be excellent to each other and party on dues by checking out my review of Villain's Head Face the Music over at Cineworld with the ever trustworthy El Fakador Laurie Blake. We also talk about Kang the Conqueror being cast in the MCU. And check out Adam Blompier's latest list video about super cool entrances. I've been Luke Cohen. Jam that jam and give me a yes, please.